Advanced Residential Applications and Case Studies. Chapter 3, The Evaluation Process, page 33. Check your understanding. This quiz has a total of three questions. There will be one question per page. You must achieve 65% to pass this quiz. Start quiz. Number one, in the application of the cost approach, historical cost data from the subject property may be brought current by A, an extraordinary assumption, B, hypothesizing, C, indexing, or D, highest and best use analysis. I'm gonna go indexing. I just remember reading something about that though. Number two, because long-term leases are often used in one to four unit residential properties, situations involving such leases are commonly encountered by residential appraisers. True or false? I'm going to go false. Number three, in the appraisal of a complex single family home, an appraiser may find that there are no comparable sales. In this situation, A, the sales comparison approach is necessary. B, the sales comparison approach may not be relevant. C, Sales data may be created using hypothetical sales, or D, the appraiser should withdraw from the assignment. I'm gonna go B. The sales comparison approach may not be relevant. Assessment completed, finish. Assessment passed, you got a 100%, good job. So remember, in the application of the cost approach, Historical cost data from the subject property may be brought current by, you said, indexing, and that was correct. Number two, because long-term leases are often used in one to four unit residential properties, situations involving such leases are commonly encountered by residential appraisers. You said false. And that was correct. And number three, in the appraisal of a complex single family home, an appraiser may find that there are no comparable sales. In this situation, you said the sales comparison approach may not be relevant. And that was correct. Continue. Page 34, summary. In this chapter, we highlighted the steps in the valuation process that are presented in standards rule one through three, through one through six. We studied standards rule one dash three and discussed highest and best use. We demonstrated how to Determine highest and best use for both vacant land and improved properties through the use of case studies. Then we cover Standards Rule 1-4, which addresses the three approaches and partial interests 
as well as anticipated public improvements and the inclusion of personal property and intangible items in real property appraisals. Standards Rule 1-5 requires us to analyze current agreements of sale, options, and listings of the subject property, as well as a three-year sales history. We discussed these issues as they pertain to complex properties. The last area is Standards Rule 1-6 which covers reconciliation and was briefly mentioned. It will be covered in detail in the next chapter. All that's left in chapter three is the chapter ending quiz. Click here if you would like to open this chapter as a PDF, which you can then print and save to your device. End of page. Page 35, chapter three ending quiz. This quiz has a total of 15 questions. There will be one question per page. You must achieve 80% to pass this quiz. Start quiz. Number one, several smaller lots are purchased and combined into one lot to enhance the potential use. What is this called? A, effective combination. B, assemblage. C, Contribution or D, reverse subdivision. I'm going to go B, assemblage. Number two, which of these is not one of the test criteria for highest and best use? A, legally permissible. B, socially acceptable. C, financially feasible. Or D, physically possible. I'm going to go B, socially acceptable. Number three. America is in the midst of a water crisis. So to commemorate our water. Number three, with regard to market area trends, an appraiser must avoid making A, an unsupported assumption or premise, B, any assumptions about trends beyond the current date, C, value opinions or conclusions based upon these trends, or D, the client unhappy if the market area trends are negative. I'm going to go A, an unsupported assumption or premise. Number four, a farm is located in a rapidly growing area, but public sewage is not available to the property. The community sewage system is expected to be completed in four to five years, at which time the property may be suitable for a high density residential development. The property's current use as a farm would likely be considered. A, a non-conforming use. B, an illegal use. C, an interim use. Or D, a convenience use. I'm going to go C, an interim use. Number five, a property is zoned R3 and is suitable for construction of up to three residential units. A single family home can be built at a cost of $125,000, which will be worth $200,000 when complete. A duplex can be built at a cost of $250,000, which will be worth $310,000 when complete.
A three unit can be built at a cost of $325,000 and will be worth $375,000 when complete. What is the maximally productive use? A, a single family home. B, a duplex. C, three unit. Or D, cannot be determined from the information provided. I'm gonna go B, a duplex. Number six, the temporary use to which a site or improved property is put until a different use becomes maximally productive is the definition of A, non-conforming use, B, interim use, C, highest and best use, or D, utility use. I'm going to go B, interim use. Number seven, certain requirements of standard one, such as requirements to analyze market area trends and develop a highest and best use opinion are only required when the appraiser is forming an opinion of A, value of a complex property. B, retrospective value. C, market value. Or D, value in use. This one's a tricky one. I'm gonna go with market value. I'm not sure about that one. Number eight. In the appraisal of a four unit property, which is 100% leased at market rent, with the leases transferred to the buyer, what effect would these leases likely have on the market value? A. A slightly negative effect B no effect or C they would make the fee simple title impossible to appraise I'm gonna go a a slightly negative effect number nine in the appraisal of a complex single-family home an appraiser may find that there are no comparable sales in this situation, A, the sales comparison approach is necessary, B, the sales comparison approach may not be relevant, C, sales data may be created using hypothetical sales, or D, the appraiser should withdraw from the assignment. I'm going to go B, the sales comparison approach may not be relevant. Number 10. When might the land residual technique best be used in analyzing a property's highest and best use? A, when it is necessary to analyze several potential uses. B, when only one use is legally permissible. Let me just start over. Number 10. When might the land residual technique best be used in analyzing a property's highest and best use? A, when it is necessary to analyze several potential uses. 
B, when only one use is legally permissible and financially feasible. C, when an opinion of highest and best use is not necessary for credible assignment results. Or D, when there are proposed improvements. I'm going to go A. I'm not 100% on that one. Number 11. With regard to effective age and remaining life, what must an appraiser avoid? A. Basing the value opinion on the effective age. B, making the remaining life less than the proposed loan term. C, making an unsupported assumption or premise. Or D, using comparable sales with different effective ages. I'm going to go C, making an unsupported assumption or premise. Number 12, a property is suitable for the construction of either a 1,400 square foot one-story home or a 2,400 square foot two-story home. The cost to construct the one-story home is $240,000. The developer's fee is $30,000. And it will be worth $375,000 when it is completed. The two-story home will cost $300,000. The developer's fee is $37,500. <coughs> and it will be worth $425,000 when completed. Which use produces the greatest land value? <coughs> A, the one-story home. B, the two-story home. C, they both produce the same land value, or D, cannot be determined from this information provided. Damn it. It's hard to do because I don't have my thing out. Um, I mean, I could put the calculator real quick. Let me see. 240, 30, 30, 375, 210. 210. Equals $165,000. So that's the single family home. Now, the two-story home, 
300,000 minus 37,500. Two sixty two five hundred. Four twenty five, four twenty five, four twenty five, four twenty five, four twenty five. One sixty two five hundred. One sixty two five hundred. So never mind, it was the two story by five hundred, whatever. Okay, so that was the answer. Number thirteen. When appraising a complex property, you may find that you will utilize the valuation approaches. A in ways that go beyond normal practice. B, in strict adherence to textbooks. C, in ways the client asks for. Or D, according to Fannie Mae guidelines. I'm gonna go A, I'm not 100% in this one. Number 14. An appraiser is performing a highest and best use analysis of a site that is zoned only for single family use. Which statement is true regarding this situation? A, the appraiser should consider the possibility that an illegal use may be constructed. B, Single family use is financially feasible. C, the appraiser must evaluate all other potential uses. Or D, single family use is the only legally permissible use. I'm gonna go D. And lastly, number 15. A use that was lawfully established and maintained, but no longer conforms to the use regulations in the area where the property is located is A, an illegal use, B, an interim use, C, a legal non-conforming use, or D, all of these. I'm gonna go C, a legal non-conforming use. Assessment completed, finish. Assessment passed, you got an 80%. So remember, number one, several smaller lots are purchased and combined into one lot to enhance the potential use. What is this called? You said assemblage and that was correct. Number two, which of these is not one of the test criteria for highest and best use? You said socially acceptable and that was correct. Number three, with regard to market area trends, an appraiser must avoid making, you said, an unsupported assumption or premise, and that was correct. Number four, a farm is located in a rapidly growing area. 
but public sewage is not available to the property. The community sewage system is expected to be completed in four to five years, at which time the property may be suitable for a high density residential development. The property's use as a farm would likely be considered. You said an interim use, and that was correct. Number five, a property is zoned R3 and is suitable for construction of up to three residential units. A single family home can be built at a cost of $125,000, which will be worth $200,000 when complete. A duplex can be built at a cost of $250,000, which will be worth $310,000 when complete. A three unit can be built at a cost of $325,000 and it'll be worth $375,000 when complete. What is the maximally productive use? You said duplex, that was incorrect. The correct answer was single family home. The maximally productive use is the use that produces the greatest residual land value. The single family home produces a residual land value of $75,000, which is greater than the residual land value for a duplex or three unit, which are worth, which are $60,000 and $50,000 respectively. Chapter three, residual technique. Number six, the temporary use to which a site or improved property is put until a different use becomes maximally productive is the definition of you said interim use. That's correct. Number seven, certain requirements of standard one, such as requirements to analyze market area trends and develop a highest and best use opinion are only required when the appraiser is forming an opinion of, you said market value, and that's correct. Number eight, in the appraisal of a four unit property, which is worth a hundred percent leased no which is a hundred percent leased at market rent with the leases transferring to the buyer what effect would these leases likely have on the market value you said a slight negative effect that's incorrect the correct answer was no effect the typical fourplex property is purchased by investors with the intention of leasing the units at rates that the market will bear. So the investor who purchased the fourplex and inherits the tenant and existing leases is one step ahead of the game, so to speak. There would likely be no effect on the value. If anything, the existing market rent leases may benefit the property value as far as typical investors are concerned. Chapter 3, Standards Rule 1-4D. Chapter 3, Standards Rule 1-4 EFG. Number 9. In the appraisal of a complex single-family home, an appraiser may find that there are no comparable sales. In this situation, you said the sales comparison approach may not be relevant. That is correct. Number 10. When might the land residual technique best be used in analyzing a property's highest and best use. You said when it is necessary to analyze several potential uses and that was correct. Number 11, with regard to effective age and remaining life, what must an appraiser avoid? You said making an unsupported assumption or premise, and that is correct. <coughs> Number 12, a property is suitable for the construction of either a 1,400 square foot single family one story home or a 2,400 square foot two story home. The cost to construct the one story home is $240,000. <coughs> the developer's fee is $30,000 and it will be worth $375,000 when it is completed. The two-story home will cost $300,000. The developer's fee is $37,500 and it will be worth $425,000 when it is completed. Which use produces the greatest land value? You said the two-story home that's incorrect. The correct answer was the one-story home.
The maximally productive use is the use that produces the greatest residual land value. The smaller home, here's the formula. $375,000 minus $240,000 minus $30,000 equals $105,000. $105,000, yeah. The larger home, $425,000 minus $300,000 minus $37,500 equals $87,500. The smaller home produces a higher residual land value. Chapter 3, Residual Technique. Number 13. When appraising a complex property, you may find that you will utilize the valuation approaches. You said in ways that go beyond normal practice, and that was correct. Number 14, an appraiser is performing a highest and best use analysis of a site that is zoned only for single family use, which statement is true regarding this situation. You said single family use is the only legally permissible use, and that was correct. Number 15, a use that was lawfully established and maintained but no longer conforms to the use regulations in the area where the property is located is, you said, a legal non-conforming use, and that was correct. End of page.